This is where we figure out recipe costs and pricing. This video might be a little bit longer because we have to figure out we're going to go through ingredient costs, recipe level costs, and also pricing. So feel free to skip around. We'll start with the ingredient costs in this section and you'll see each ingredient in your recipe listed out as well as the price and quantity and units that you pay for it. So we'll start with baking soda here. We want to enter the amount we buy and the amount we pay for that. So say we buy uh, one and a half pounds at a time and pay three dollars for that. We're all set there. We'll go through the same thing with wheat flour. Say we buy two pounds at a time, a quantity of two, a unit of one pound, and a price of say two dollars. I'll go through and add the rest of them quickly so you don't have to follow along. Just one second. And voila, we have pricing for uh, each of our ingredients, and you'll see our cost per batch is $3.87, and since we have four packages in this recipe, our cost per package is about a dollar. Um, and in our cost breakdown, uh, it's just food right now. We'll get into the recipe level costs next. So aside from food ingredients, you also have packaging costs, labor costs, also overhead. These fields allow you to enter a kind of quick and dirty uh, way for your packaging, labor, and overhead costs. So this would be per package, uh, what you pay, maybe it's 75 cents. Um, say you're paying $5 for labor for this recipe and a dollar for overhead. You'll see that our cost per batch changes, same with our cost per package, and the cost breakdown shows us a little bit more information about how it's split between food, packaging, and labor. The other thing we can do if we want to take a more granular approach to packaging and labor and overhead is create non-food ingredients in our recipe. So just like we have honey and sugar here, we can add uh, processing labor, we can add um, packaging labor, shipping labor, all the various things that go into um, creating and sending out your recipe, as well as the packaging level things. So maybe it's ribbon, primary, secondary packaging, uh, parchment paper, any stickers and labels that you use. Um, you can all add that to create a full bill of materials for your recipe and create pricing uh, on a bit more granular level. But we're taking the, the quick and dirty kind of shortcut method here. And for a bit more information, you can always hover over the information icons uh, and you'll get a bit more detail. So the last step we have is margins and pricing. Uh, by default, we have your margin set to zero, a 20% distributor margin, 5% broker margin, 40% retailer margin. Um, so here we have a final uh, suggested retail price of $7.15. Um, but you can change this uh, however you'd like. Say you're not using a broker. Um, that'll change, say, your distributor margin is actually 30%. That can change as well. And you can take a margin for yourself so we want 30% for ourselves and maybe you're not uh, selling retail at all it's just the farmers market or online um, you can change all these to zero and just set your own margin to get the final price uh, to your customer down here there's a little bit more information of um, who's profiting uh, how much and who's buying at, at what price from whom um, so it's kind of more in paragraph form uh, how everything works and that's pretty much it for pricing and costing. Uh, as always, if you have questions, feel free to email or call us um, and hope this was helpful.